it has been raining cats and dogs in Houston. I know that's a tired old saying, but I mean every time I tried to go out on the bike, it started raining. And when it looked like it was going to clear up enough and I could get loaded up to go out on the bike, it would start raining again. So since I couldn't go to any historical sites or anything fun to go paint this week, I decided to do some cloud studies in studio. First I masked off the areas with uh, masking tape and washi tape to make sure that I had some little areas that I could isolate from each other and uh, that way the colors wouldn't bleed onto each other and I could do multiple scenes more like thumbnails because they're just studies they're just we're just playing with colors trying to figure out you know what makes the sky so the idea is just to have a few little blocks that I can play with I'm going to start by uh, wetting the paper. Most of these are going to be wet and wet, uh, meaning that I'm going to use wet paint onto wet paper. And so I want to wet the paper just enough to have a little bit of a sheen to it. I don't want standing water, but I don't want the paint soaking into the paper and drying up before I can add more paint. I want the paint to blend together. So I'm going to start by wetting the paper, and then I'll paint wet on top of that. In this first pick, I like the dark grays in the cloud with the blue peeking through, but I don't want to paint the whole sky gray. I just want to I want to zoom in so that I can see the the stark blue contrasting with the dark gray clouds. I'm not too worried about the detail at this point. I'm really just trying to get blocks of color next to blocks of color and I want to make sure that the block of color stops and repeats so that you don't see a definite line but you can make out you can make out the blurred edges of the clouds in this next photo I really like the pinks and purples and yellows against that light blue sky in the background A couple of things to remember, and I obviously didn't pay attention to one of them. If you leave a little bit of a gap for the yellow, you won't get that green effect in the sky. And the other thing to remember is that the colors will dry lighter than they actually are when you apply them wet. So you can go a little bit dark. You can, you can afford to go a little dark and not worry too much about how it's going to draw the eye afterwards. This yellow and gray sky was practically monochrome. Uh, it was fun trying to mix the browns and purples and yellows to give it that monochrome effect. I wish that I had paid more attention to the bands of light uh, highlighting around the edge of the clouds. Here's another blue and orange sunset that I love so much. Uh, we get these a lot in Texas, especially being as close to the coast as I am. The, uh, the clouds just look purple against that blue sky and that orange reflected sunlight off of them is just stunning to me. This time I remembered to leave gaps for the yellow to avoid the green. But 
This photo didn't really do this sky justice. The purple was just majestic in the sky with highlights of pink and orange. Uh, honestly, you just you couldn't do it justice with the phone cam. You can go back with a clean brush, with a clean wet brush, and soften some edges so that they blend a little better. Uh, you don't want it, you don't want any hard edges when you're doing a cloud because clouds actually don't have solid lines on them. Sometimes it takes a bit of perspective and context to make clouds look like clouds. You can add some trees to the foreground or some power lines or a fence or buildings or anything to make it look like you're looking up at the sky. And once you do that, you, you notice that the sky just all of a sudden is a sky. It just pops, pop, it's a sky. Uh, where before it was just a blob of colors, uh, suddenly you're looking up to the trees or the power lines or across the cityscape. Okay, 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 dang it!